final activity is a little post-test to test your knowledge of Porum Parra, see if you can select the best answer according to what we've been talking about throughout this activity, um, based on your just general knowledge of how Porum Parra work in Spanish. Go ahead and complete the activity. This is a message that a friend, um, Nines, has left for her friend Tomas uh, about something that's going on, some sales that are happening at a store. Decide which one, and as you decide por o para in each situation, make a little note to yourself why you're choosing por or why you're choosing para. Is it a destino? De, is it a lugar de destino? Is it an objetivo? Um, keep these things in mind, and like I said, go ahead and jot them down as you complete this. Set. Let's go through these one by one quickly, um, and decide por o para, and kind of hit on the why of each one. So for the first one, se pueden comprar muchas cosas por poco dinero. Por, in this case, por poco dinero is an exchange, an intercambio, right? Um, number two, además dicen que para el próximo lunes, para is our fecha límite, fecha límite or our deadline. Um, this will happen by Monday. Van a bajar los precios, they're going to lower these prices hasta un 60%. Here's a use of por that we haven't analyzed. But this use of por in terms of percentage, por ciento, per 100, you could also think um, in terms per in general, like I have three, there are three people per room. Hay tres personas por cuarto. This idea of per is usually por in Espanol. But anyway, number three, regalos, voy a comprar regalos para Navidad for Christmas. Um, not that Christmas is motivating the reason you're doing it, but you're thinking in the future, I'm going to buy them. My objective for Christmas, I'm buying these gifts. And four, I'm going to buy them for whom? For the whole family. Para toda la familia. La persona que recibe algo. Mm -hmm. um, pero para ir al mega super. So number five, para ir in order to go. So objetivo. Um, what do I have to do? Tengo que pasar por mucho tiempo. Tengo que pasar por el centro de la ciudad. So I have to traverse this space, um, the downtown, tra uh, viajar por, sí, number seven. This deals with la carretera por mucho tiempo. This is a periodo de tiempo, so you did it for a lot of time. Uh, you're going to be there for a long time. Voy a salir, number eight, voy a salir para el mega super. Para, this is referring to a destino, lugar de destino. Where are you headed to? Um, <clears throat> where's your goal? Where's your destination? Para. Vamos a pasar, number nine, por la planta de ropa. So this is where you're going to walk through or walk by or walk around, you know. So this is that lugar ambiguo, cruzado, frecuentado, some place that you're frequenting, some ambiguous place. Um, <clears throat> and then also number 10, espero que, what? Espe uh, espero estar de vuelta para las ocho. So your deadline, fecha limite, doesn't have to be literally date, limited date, but it's just a limit time. So by eight o'clock, para las ocho, that's when you would like to have this happen. And then the same thing at the 11, um, te veo en casa para esa hora. I'll see you by that time. I'll be there, okay? So there we go. We've seen several examples of por un par. We've been able to incorporate some of these uh, rules as we go, but we see that they don't always fit exactly. If you can think of any more uses of por o para that aren't covered here or that don't really fit exactly what we're seeing here, go ahead and jot those down and bring them to your class and ask your instructor. Otherwise, thank you for your time. I hope that you learned a little bit here and look forward to continuing our discussion and work with por un par in the next classes.